again. But I still want to see some straight shots to the body. Some safe drafts to the body, come back with the right hook, and back off with the jab. Take a deep breath. Listen, I want to be clear with you. I want you to understand what I'm George saying. George Peterson was very interesting when we spoke with him in our body. fighter meeting yesterday. Paul Williams' trainer, he said, Paul needs to get back to doing what he does best. His defense is his offense. That's their theory, and, and that's been the way they've approached it all along, and uh, they're almost defiant about that. Uh, they say, no, we don't want to fight tall. We don't want to be boxer punchers. We think that's, as you said, the offense is the defense. And, and you see in this fight, in this particular fight, you don't see the same Paul Williams that we saw against Winky Wright. You don't see the same Paul Williams that we saw against those other guys like Central. He's slowing down a little bit. And you know what? That may not be a bad thing. No. He's slowed down to the point where he can truly now see his work. You yes. know, rather than just drawing go, go, any go. type of punches let go, and just let letting them hit anything. Now he's going. really targeting his punches, you know, to the heart, to the liver, to the organs, to the chin that's making an impact on his power. I put in the keys, less is more for him. Stop. And Stop. I think Stop. that's Stop. true. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Let's take a look at the total punches on show stats during the last round. Good indication of what is often the case in a Paul Williams fight. Landing, throwing almost double and uh, clearly landing more. And he does it with volume. And you know, one of the things tonight is Paul Williams has had a better defense. Now there's an example of a wild left hand that maybe a better fighter might take advantage of, but not tonight. Stop. Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. You know, Sheena, for his part, continues to try. You know, he's game and he's he's trying to land something that will change this fight. Just has not been able to do it, and I don't know if he has the power to do it in any case at this juncture. Stop, 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 stop. 1-10 to go in the 10th round, scheduled for 12. Paul Williams returning. Another low blow by Ishida. Nice work inside by Williams. Watching off the ropes. Go right here, let him go right here. Stop. I got a look at what's coming up on Showtime. Well, I will be uh, on board with uh, Steve Farhood for the uh, Showbox show uh, next weekend in uh, in uh, Las Vegas. And Jesse Vargas, a very good, a very good uh, prospect who fought Josito Lopez and had a very good fight with him. So that should be a lot of fun. And DeAndre Lattimore, of course, a contender. And then March 10th, uh, we're going to be down there in Puerto Rico where we expect a real brawl between Salido and Juan Manuel Lopez in what should be uh, a great, great fight. And the big question surrounding the Salido Lopez rematch is Al are you going to bring your combat helmet I am, yes I am, wearing, PR. I am wearing a Chicago Bears helmet <laughs> at ringside so I don't get for the folks that don't know I got hit with a water bottle uh, and I'm gonna have Antonio there to deflect it which my partner didn't do the last time he didn't he didn't save me Antonio <laughs> I know you'll throw your body in front right. of me, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got, I, Anything I should, for you, Al. Don't, don't hold my breath. 
Uh, 11th round scheduled for 12. Nobuhiro Ishida, the young Japanese fighter, well, actually at 36 years old, in the aqua and black. And then there's Paul Williams, the former two-time world champion in the red and white. And Williams is, according to some of our experts, pitching a shutout here in Corpus Christi. Sheeta has a three and three record in 12 round fights. And uh, I think if, unless something dramatic happens, he's gonna go under 500, that's for sure. Paul Williams wants, has suggested some names in the 154 pound division. Obviously, people like Saul Alvarez, uh, maybe Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. up in the middleweight if he decides to go there. Um, you know, those are, those are interesting fights and fights that bring with them commerce. Yeah, especially with the Chavez. I mean, rather people uh, want to question his boxing ability. He's a big name. He got a big fan following anywhere uh, in one of those in Mexico or anywhere yeah. like that that has a big following. So that's a fight that I like to see yes. Paul Williams in and, I agree. you know, give him a good measuring stick about, you know, where he's at in his career. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, and of course, Alvarez is fighting Shane Mosley, and that's obviously the onus in that fight is on Mosley to show he belongs in the ring with him, but but Alvarez is, you know, if he gets a win against that kind of veteran, then it would set up an interesting fight against somebody like a Williams. Well, they're going to want to see can Alvarez dominate him yes. uh, like Pacquiao, or maybe even stop him early, or, or do something dramatic against a veteran trial horse, you know, a uh, future Hall of Famer like Sh Shane Mosley. Nice oh. left hand by Paul Williams. And a nice right by Ishida, but again, the power just doesn't resonate with him against Paul Williams. Because he's standing straight up in the air, Al, he's not able to bend his knees and yep. get any type of leverage on those punches. That's why he's just punching with arm punches. Yeah. And I don't think he's going to be able to get it done unless Paul Williams closes his eyes and walk into something big. Yeah, and he's squared up as you also. So, yeah. And there you see a right hand Stop. which he just uh, pushes that punch. Paul Williams didn't have a lot of opportunity to train for Ishida because there was really no tape. He knocked out James Kirkland in the first round, so that was less than two minutes. And after that, there was no tape on Edson Espinosa when he fought him in Mexico City in November. Now Williams really letting his hands go, and he has to be commended throughout his entire career for being this kind of fighter. No doubt, Gus. I mean, uh, even after the knockout, he's still in there face to face and let it all hang out. He made the point, Paul Williams, that, you know, I wasn't gun shy. The one people think people can say they might dispute the lore of victory. I wasn't gun shy after I got knocked out uh, by uh, Martinez. I came right back, and uh, people criticized me for standing and fighting with Lara, but he did it. You know, he wasn't gun shy after the knockout. So he want to lean on you so he can punch. But keep turning him and keep getting off to that body. Okay. Okay, Everything's Punch. You have to swing. You have to go back and punch. Like you, 